Hello, everybody. Hello. Thanks for joining me today. I see everybody is coming on in. Welcome, welcome. It's Thursday, April the 15th. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Hello, everybody. Mimsy has shared. Thank you so much, Mimsy, for moderating today. Mimsy has shared the link for the free pattern for this block in the comment section. And if you're watching on the replay, you can jump down to the description box and grab this. It is a simple one page PDF that gives you all the measurements for the pieces of the block we're making today. Y'all, we're making the Rocky Road quilt block. This might also be known as some other names as well. This will be a 12 and a half by 12 and a half inch quilt block, finishing at 12 inches in our quilts. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. No half square triangles today, yay. <laughs> And uh, even though there's several pieces for this block, it is pretty easy sewing. And I'm going to walk you through all the steps in today's video. It's so great to see y'all. Come on in and get situated. Uh, today's chat topic. What type of quilting techniques are you interested in learning more about? What kind of stuff would you like to learn more about? Oh, it's so great to see y'all. Beverly says, I'm interested in everything. <laughs> Me too, Beverly. I have my favorites, though, like applique and art quilts. Those are techniques that rank high with me. But uh, I like paper piecing, too. Hello, everybody. Come on in and get situated. If you're watching this on the replay, feel free to skip around to where we get started. Uh, we go live so that our extended family can meet at least once a week and uh, just spend time with each other. So this is a chatty video. <laughs> if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, feel free to skip around. Before we get started today, I want to let y'all know next week's live will be on Wednesday instead of Thursday. Okay, Wednesday instead of Thursday, Wednesday the 21st at our normal time, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be making a mug rug. It will be a free pattern. So I designed the pattern and I came home the other day and I made the mug rug. And the more I looked at it, I was not really happy with the design of it. And that's been happening here a lot lately for me. You know, you make something and you're not 100% happy with it. And you're like, should I just leave it and keep going or should I redo it? About 30 minutes before we got started today, I decided I'm going to redo it. <laughs> I even had the thumbnail up for next week's video and I took it down right before we got started because I'm just not 100% happy with it. And it's worth going back and redoing it so that I love this mug rug pattern before our live next week. Sometimes you're like, okay, you know, I can live with it. I'll just keep going. Sometimes it's worth going back and redoing, right? I'm going to come back and read all of your comments about the things you want to learn about with quilting this evening when I have some time to go through and read the live chat because I want to know all the stuff that each of you are interested in. And sometimes the comments go by so quick that I can't read them as fast. So yeah, as soon as I redo the design of that mug rug, I'll put a thumbnail up. But we're going live Wednesday instead of Thursday because Thursday we're coming back home from the campground. And that's usually a busy day. <laughs> and I don't want to feel rushed in our time with you. So Wednesday instead of Thursday. Thank you, Hazel. I made this shirt. I made it. I love, uh, this is like a uh, metallic, shiny heat transfer vinyl. It's so pretty. And then I wanted to put a call for action out there for anybody who's interested in sharing their craft room and doing a live virtual craft room tour. I don't know if you saw Penny's yesterday. She did such a good job. You can find uh, the thumbnail for Penny's craft room tour here on my channel. If you missed it, I hope you'll go and get to know Penny 
a little bit better. You might know her in the in the comment section as Stitch Pennies. And uh, she shared her craft room with everybody yesterday. So if you missed that, you can go back and uh, and check that out. Oh, it's so great to see y'all. So great to see you. So today, let me go ahead and switch the screen because I have some examples to show you of this block. This is the Rocky Road quilt block, y'all. Again, it might be called uh, a couple of different names, right? It almost looks three-dimensional, right? It almost looks like the red piece is just kind of floating there. <laughs> And it looks like this piece is covering on top, right? Very simple to make. I'm going to walk you through the steps, but I wanted to show you. Where did I put it? Oh, no. Let me go back to the other screen. <laughs> now that you've seen the quilt block, I put the examples here. Let me show you. This is two different layouts with this quilt block. And maybe I should have used different colors. I don't know. In the example but this is just two of the different ways that you could lay out this block if you made a whole bunch of these blocks and just made a quilt out of this particular block this is two of the ways you could arrange them and I think that looks pretty cool right that looks pretty cool you could also put this block in a sampler quilt and uh, and you could also just get creative and have fun laying it out several different ways. Putting this block on point would change the look of it. Adding a sashing, sashing with cornerstones, all of those different things would change the look of it. So you can just get creative and have fun with it. Gail says, uh, she doesn't like working with little pieces of fabric. You're in luck today, Gail, because our pieces are pretty big for this block. I think you'll like this block. All right, everybody. Who's ready to get started? Let's go back to the cutting table. I'm going to walk you through all the pieces you need to cut for this block, okay? Uh, I've broken it down into three different colors. Three different colors, and I just grouped them as A, B, and C. And you'll see that right here, right in the middle of the PDF, okay? So let's go over our A pieces. And for my A pieces, I'm using the blue fabric. So when I say A, we're looking at the blue fabric. You'll need a... You'll need A for A. <laughs> you will need a six and a half by three and a half inch piece. You'll need one three and a half by three and a half piece and one larger block that is six and a half by six and a half. Those are your A pieces. For your B pieces, I'm using red. All right, I just want you to see that block too. So for B, you will need a six and a half by three and a half and one three and a half by three and a half piece. All right, and for the C pieces, I'm using the white fabric. You will need two six and a half by three and a half. There's two of them there, and two three and a half by three and a half pieces. So lots of pieces, but they're relatively big. Like this is the smallest piece we're working with today. So that's awesome, <laughs> right? That's awesome. The way we're going to actually put this together is in a three rows, right? I just want to move these off to the side like that. A, B, and C. The way we're going to actually put this together eventually will be into three sections. 
and then it'll go down to two sections and then it makes the block. But to get to this part and to this part, we have to start doing some sewing. And so that's where we're going to start today, okay? I'm going to try to go slow so that if you're sewing with me live, you can follow along. So let's start breaking down this top, let's see, this very top section. Okay, let's start with an A and a C piece. This is going to be your A, three and a half by six and a half. And a C piece that is also six and a half by three and a half. So there's the very top of our block. We will be using a quarter inch seam allowance, so don't forget about that. Go ahead and set your machine to a quarter inch seam allowance and get your iron warming up because we're going to be pressing quite a bit today. Pressing quite a bit. Let's see, I'm just trying to move these to where they're going to not get lost, but not be in the way. So these are our very first two pieces we're joining together. Nice and easy. I'm so glad y'all are hanging out with me today. I have a bit of a headache. <laughs> I don't know if it's the pollen, which is horrible. I don't know if it's because we have rain coming in. And I don't know if it's because we had the heater on in the camper last night. It could be one of any of those things. But I have a bit of a headache. <laughs> bit of a headache. All right, y'all. We're ready to go ahead and start sewing. I'm going to move you over to the sewing machine. There we go. We're bringing in these two pieces side by side. It's hard to see the white one because it blends in with my sewing machine. But we're going to lay the pretty sides together. And we're going to sew our first seam right there. And match them up. Nice and straight from one edge to the other. And then we're going to give that a press. And we'll be setting that aside for a second. So here's my pieces. I'm just going to iron mine. My seam to the dark side. You can uh, iron your seam open if you like. Is she warming up? I think she's warming up. Ooh, practically creative. Got a new embroidery machine. That's exciting. Oh, a whole new world has opened up to you. Embroidery, that's fun. All right, so there is our first joined section, right? So we are right there. A and C is together. Now we're going to move to this row right below it, and it has an A, a B, and a C section, okay? So this first A section is a three and a half by three and a half inch piece. And then we have the B piece, which is six and a half by three and a half. And that goes there. And then we have the C section, which is three and a half by three and a half. So there we are. There's our three pieces for the next section. When you break down a block like this, it might look like a really complicated block, but when you break it down into sections, it actually ends up being a lot easier than it looks, right? So 
So yep, I'm gonna bring all three of these pieces to over to the machine and uh, do the two seams while we're there, right? This will flip pretty side over there. And this will flip pretty side over here, just like that. And we're gonna sew both of those seams at the sewing machine. So we'll bring that over, try not to move anything. Y'all see I'm sewing kind of slow today. <laughs> That's how my brain is working today. Sometimes I sew faster, but I'm totally okay with slowing slower if I need to in order to stay nice and straight. So there's those two pieces. That was quick, right? That was nice and quick. We can open those up. And I'm gonna press both of these seams right towards the bigger piece, just like that. Again, if you wanna press yours open, you can do that. I usually like to get them started on the back side and then I'll flip it over just like that and give it a quick press from the front. Okay, so there's our second section. See how quick that's coming together? So there's that section just like that. <laughs> Debbie, if you're watching, she sent me the cutest thing. She said, uh, I don't know if y'all saw Debbie Campbell's craft room tour. Uh, I talked with Debbie. I usually meet with the people doing the tours the day before or the morning of, and we make sure everything is set up right. And she said, I made you something, and I just have to show it to you. I'm going to send it to you. Well, I got it yesterday. Uh, she embroidered just like that with some little quilting notions and stuff. And she said, you say that quite often. I didn't realize that. She said, you say that all the time. And when you say it, it just makes me feel so good because the way you break it down, just like that, you know, you're all done and, and stuff like that. So I didn't realize I say that all the time, but thank you so much, Debbie, for sending that to me. So just like that, we have those two sections done. Now this bottom, see this bottom row? We have a little bit of sewing to do before we have a complete section down there, right? We have the bigger A piece that's going to come in down here. And then we have three pieces that need to come together right there. So let's lay those out. We have... Uh, a C piece that's three and a half by three and a half. Let me move all this stuff up some. So I'm going to run out of space. There we go. Shifting up. We have the big A piece right there. We have a C three and a half by three and a half. We have a B piece three and a half by three and a half. And we have the last D piece that comes down there. See that? So before we can make that a section, we have to make this a section, right? So we're going to flip over this B piece just like that. And I'm going to just real quick without switching you over, I'm going to sew that seam right there 
and come right back, okay? I don't think I need to switch the camera for that part. So there we are. We're going to open that up. I'm going to press it towards the red section. Pressing towards the red section. Y'all are so sweet. I'm going to tell you what, if I'm ever having a bad day, I should just stream live on YouTube. <laughs> Y'all are just so sweet. All right. So there's that mini section. And now this mini section flips over to the bigger part of it, that bottom C piece. And we sew that seam right where those two join, right in the middle. I will switch the screen for that part. Just making sure it's lined up. There we go. I think I goofed up a little bit, y'all, because see this white fabric I'm working with? I've been watching, looking at the way y'all organize your fabric. And uh, every time I see everybody's fabric stash all organized and separated, you know, this is by this person. This is the collection from this person. And this is my Tula pink fabric, you know. I think I should totally organize my fabric stash. And then uh, I was making this block and I'm pretty sure this white fabric is a polyester. It's like a symphony broadcloth or something. Because it does a little shrinking <laughs> when I iron it too hot. And I don't know for sure because it's mixed in and there's no salvage on this. I just grabbed it because it was in my, you know, section for the light, whiter fabrics and stuff. I'm pretty sure it's a polyester. So I'm just being really careful when I press it, not to press it too long. <laughs> We're going to make it work. All right, so now this bottom section is in two pieces, right? So to make this the section, we're going to flip over our large A section right on top. And we're sewing that seam. And I'm going to do that without switching the camera because you get the idea. And then we open that up and I'm going to press these seams or this seam over towards the big block. So y'all see everything coming together. There's three sections. We only have two seams left to finish this up. Thank you, Kim. Thank y'all so much.
three sections. And I'm just going to take a pause here for a second because this is coming together so quick. But I also know that some of you have prepared your pieces and are sewing with me live. And so I just want to make sure that I'm taking the time that if you're doing that, that you can catch up and uh, finish alongside of me at the same time. So if you're watching on the replay, you know, you can skip forward a little bit. <laughs> We're not going to stay here forever like this, but I am going to take a quick pause just so everybody can catch up. Yeah, I cannot wait to sit down this evening and read through the live chat to see all of the things that you're interested in learning about. You know, we're all different. We're all different. And uh, I know some quilters who do not like doing applique at all. <laughs> and they avoid those patterns and those quilts and those quilting projects with applique. I love applique. It's one of, it's my most favorite thing to do. But in the quilting world, there's like endless possibilities of techniques to learn, right? Painting on fabric and stamping on fabric, art quilts, crumb quilts, uh memory quilts, t-shirt quilt, there you know. It's just so so much you know, if you don't like applique, there's a million other different kind of techniques that you can do, right? Ta -da, ta -da. I think the sun is coming out, but my phone said it was supposed to rain in two hours. <laughs> I have this weather app on my phone and it's never accurate. It, it's like it lies to me. Every day it'll send me a notification. Rain starting in your area in two hours. So I think, okay, I better go to the store now and come back before the rain starts. And it never rains. <laughs> or it'll tell me, uh, today's going to be sunny and clear all day. So I'm like, okay, I'll wait till this afternoon to go get groceries. Thunderstorm. Get drenched. I'm going to delete the app. I am about sick and tired of it. But my app said rain in two and a half hours. It does kind of look like it's raining or it's going to. But now the sun's coming out. Who knows what it's going to do? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Vicki, you've messed up several times. All right. So what you should do, Vicki, is maybe just pause and stop sewing and just watch along and then come back on the replay where you can actually pause the video, right? You'll do one little seam and press, you know, pause the video, sew that seam and press it and then hit play again and do the next set. And then hit pause, you know, and that way, because uh, I'm kind of like you. I think I would feel rushed if I was trying to sew along with somebody. And even though I try to really slow it down, I forget and I just go fast. Uh, and so that's what I would do. I would wait and watch on the replay and pause it and sew along to the replay. Jeannie, that's so funny. Yeah, it says it's supposed to rain, but the sun's coming out. Who knows what it's going to do, but my head is killing me. I think it's going to rain. <laughs> All right, to finish this up, y'all, we just have two seams. And so the way my mind works is let's do it like this, right? Let's make two halves. And to do that, we're going to flip this very top row right down and match up that seam right in the middle and we're going to sew that from edge to edge 
with our quarter inch seam allowance sewing machine. There we go. I have to say though, Vicki, you might have messed up today. I was so dang proud of you showing off your quilt. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> Vicki, I was so dang proud of you with your first quilt and sharing it in the show and tell. Let me just say that just to boost your confidence a little bit. That is an amazing quilt. You did a good job. All right, I'm going to make sure it's all lined up here. Just like that. I definitely think this white fabric is not cotton or not all cotton. It's a little stretchy. Let me line it up. There we go. My sewing machine, y'all. Inevitably, after each live, someone on the replay will ask, what sewing machine am I using? I'm using the Juki HZL F600. But one of the reasons I, I wanted to talk about my sewing machine for a minute, because y'all see I struggled with this seam. It kept wanting to flip. Does anybody with this machine notice that there's a little lip right here? There's a little ledge. And it flips over your seams when you're trying to sew and you have a seam that's going in that direction. And when you get here, it wants to catch on that little lip. <laughs> I think that is annoying. That's probably my only drawback to this machine. Sometimes I even take a piece of tape and cover that ledge to help kind of alleviate that from happening. But that's the only thing that I'm not crazy about with this sewing machine. We're going to open this up and press this seam. Otherwise, I love this sewing machine. I'm pressing my seam towards this section with two pieces. You can press yours open if you want to. Hazel, you've noticed that with your sewing machine? That little lip right there. That gets on my nerves. All right, so we have that section like that. And we have only one more seam to do. Uh, I can lift my platform up a little bit, and that does help, but that that uh, that lip is always there. It's always there. Kim, that's exactly what I use. I use either painter's tape or um, washi tape because I have an abundance of washi tape. Like, I... It's not even saying how much washi tape I have. And it comes in all pretty colors and stuff, right? So a lot of times I'll just double up two pieces of washi tape and cover that little section right there. <laughs> all right, y'all. Look at here. Y'all know what to do. We're going to flip this over. And this is our last seam for this block. That's it. The very last seam for this block.
Now y'all can pin your pieces together if that helps you stay more accurate. Or you could glue baste your pieces together if that helps you stay more accurate. Or you can stop sometimes at halfway through like I'm doing and make sure everything's lined up. And that is all of the sewing for today. That's it. That is it. We're going to open this up. And we're going to press. Yeah, that white fabric, she's a little stretchy. <laughs> it would be real easy to make this block wonky with this fabric that I'm using. All right, and let me just press one more time from the front. I really do like this block. I think using the red, white, and blue, this would make a really handsome Quilt of Valor. And, uh, you know, I've paused here and there throughout making this block, but y'all, if you just went to town sewing, you could knock these blocks out pretty quickly. So it's one of the, you know, I like to call them pretender blocks because it looks more difficult than it is. And even though it has lots of different pieces, you could just chain stitch, chain stitch all of your sections, right? And then assemble the blocks just by chain stitching. I think you could knock out a quilt made out of this block pretty quick so if you have uh if you want to make a quilt of valor coming up quickly or even a baby quilt too right if you change the fabrics to uh you know baby themed fabrics and you had to knock out a quilt pretty quick as a gift i think this block lens good for that too Hazel, there's no telling why I bought this. Actually, there I bet you I can tell you why I bought it. Okay, so, you know, I've been diving into sublimation. And sublimation uh, does not work on 100% cotton fabric, right? Uh, it actually dyes the fibers of the fabric, and they have to be synthetic, like polyester. And so I had gone to Joann's. <laughs> And I bought some Symphony Broadcloth uh, because it's 65% polyester. And I tried printing a photo on that. And it looked beautiful, but it did fade when I washed it. And that's because of the 35% cotton in the Symphony Broadcloth. And, uh, and I didn't want it to fade at all. So I guarantee you, I just threw that fabric right over into my bin because I'm not picky like that, although I should be. I probably should be. Or at least more organized than what I am. My wall looks pretty with all the colors, but y'all, I just throw stuff in there. I just throw it in. Susan, I think so too. It reminds me of the card tricks. The card tricks has one more block, right? You know, and it's arranged a little bit differently. But I thought so too. Debbie, I'm so glad you're watching. Yay. 
So she said, uh, how much, how do you know how much fabric to buy? Well, uh, here's a great way to figure that out, Debbie. And you might already have this, but there's an app that you can put on your phone or your tablets and stuff, your iPads, whatever you're using, uh, called the Robert Kaufman app. It's a quilting app. It's a quilting calculator. So, you know, you could look at this block and you could figure out, okay, so this block is going to finish at 12 inches, right? Let's say you want to make 12 of these blocks, right? You can use that quilt calculator and you can individually add up all your pieces, right? So you know you need 12, because we're making 12 blocks, of these six and a half by three and a half. You plug that into the calculator, it's going to tell you how much yardage to buy. So it might say quarter of a yard. So you write down quarter of a yard. Then you're going to come over here and of this A fabric for each block, you need one three and a half by three and a half. Or you're going to times that by 12 because to make your quilt, you need 12 of those. You'll plug that into the calculator and then it might say you need another quarter of a yard. So you're going to make a running total and then add it up. And so to make your quilt, you might need a yard and a half of the A pieces. And I'm just throwing numbers out there. But yeah, the Robert Kaufman app, huge time saver. And it does the math for you. Finished, this is a 12 inch block. This actually measures unfinished 12 and a half by 12 and a half, right? Because we've got our seam allowances in there. Yeah, isn't she pretty? She's a pretty block. So now I have two of them. Just like y'all see the tulip blocks on the wall behind me. I usually make one just to test my measurements and to have an example, right? And then I make one during the live. So I end up always with two blocks of everything we do. <laughs> there they are. I'm going to try and move them down a little bit like this. Pretty fabrics, right? This blue fabric was my aunt's. I love it so much. That was my aunt's fabric. Yep, so I'll add these on the wall with the tulips. I don't know that I'll end up putting them together. But you can see I set my tulips on point on the wall. And I've kind of really fallen in love with them like that. So I don't know if I'll come back and make more tulip blocks and make that just a tulip block quilt. Or if I'll end up mixing it in with other things, I don't know yet. Trinita, you could use a different color for each one of your pieces. Just know if you did that. So if you used a purple, a yellow, a brown, a red, the look of your block is going to be different. Still would be pretty awesome. But to get the effect of the three pieces and the three-dimensional look, you know, uh, three different colors. You don't have to use blue, red, and white. You could change that out. But if you use different colors for all these pieces, your block is going to look different than this. Vicki says, wait till you see mine. Oh, post it on the creative crew, Vicki. I want to see it. I want to see it. I can't wait to see it. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to end up doing with these blocks. We shall see. They might just end up over on the side for who knows how long. You know, I was talking to someone about wedding quilts the other day. Signature wedding quilts, you know, those are a big thing. And uh, someone was talking about what kind of quilt pattern could you could you work with to do a signature quilt. 
I almost think something like this, you know, if if the couple has certain colors for their wedding or, you know, their house is going to be a certain color, whatever, you could almost do these sections in their colors and then use these spaces as your signature places. I think that would work. I think that would work. And your overall quilt design would be pretty too, right? Yes. So next week. Okay, so if you missed at the very beginning and you came in after we started. Let me switch this back over. Oh, and let me take that down. <laughs> if you came in after we got started, I want you to know uh, next week we are doing a mug rug pattern. It's a free pattern. But we're going to be streaming live on Wednesday instead of Thursday next week. So um, just write that down so you don't forget and you don't miss it if you want to be here. We're actually coming home from the campground on Thursday. And uh, so I figured we'd go live on Wednesday so I can take my time and just hang out with y'all and not feel rushed. Oh no, Practically Creative said my niece got married and nearly cried when I sent her a cast iron ski skillet instead of a quilt as her gift. <laughs> I bet you she really wanted that quilt. Cast iron skillets are nice though. Maybe she's never cooked in one. Those are nice. Make some cornbread and a cast iron skillet. There's nothing like it. Susan, yes. When I say signature quilt, people can sign the pieces that you make the quilt. So, you know, you could bring the blocks, not the entire quilt, but just the blocks to the wedding or the rehearsal or to the wedding showers. You know, people, some I don't know if people are still doing that anymore, Sh the showers and stuff, and uh, have people sign the individual pieces. And then you put that together as a quilt. Of course, the couple wouldn't get it right when they get married if you do it that way. But after the wedding, you can put it together and give it to them then. Ooh, Jane just got the Robert Kaufman app. Oh, you it's going to save you so much headaches, especially if you're math challenged like I am. <laughs> it does all the math for you. Nita said, what is a quilt of valor? Is it done... Is it a quilt done in blocks of all red, white, and blue? Yeah, I mean, traditionally and typically it's your patriotic colors and fabrics, right? I've seen quilts of valor in all different patterns. And what makes it a quilt of valor, you know, the theme of it is your patriotic colors. I have seen black added to them. I've seen gold fabric added to them. Um... But overall, your red, white, and blue colors. Ah, Susan just got the Robert Kaufman app too. Yeah, y'all are gonna, y'all are gonna be like, wow, I don't have to do all this math. It'll figure out how much binding you need for your quilts. It'll figure out uh, your set in triangles if you're doing a block and a block. It'll figure out how much batting and backing fabric you need to buy for your quilt. It's pretty awesome. <clears throat> Jeannie said, I've done several signature quilts. I've never done one. I love them. I love the thought of them. 
but I've never made one. Oh, see, Mimsy's done one. She made a signature quilt for a housewarming and had everyone sign it at the party. That's awesome. The only thing I would, you know, if you made the whole entire quilt and then you have people sign it. <laughs> I know some people I probably wouldn't trust to spur of the moment write something on that quilt because once it's on there, it's on there. And then if you're like me, you know, I have shaky hands, so I might try one time and mess up and then have to do another one. So that's why I would probably do the pieces individually and then make a quilt out of it. Oh, okay. So Mimsy said I had them do the blocks, but made sure no one walked off with them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all, so that is everything. That is the Rocky Road quilt block. I reminded you about the live for next week. Stay tuned to the channel. I will upload um, a thumbnail for the project we're doing next week as soon as I redo the measurements. I want to redo it so that I'm happy with it. And then uh, the thumbnail will be up. You can set a reminder and grab the pattern for it. Uh, it's been a lot of fun hanging out with you today. Thanks for spending time with me. And uh, if you want to share your craft room, if you want to do a craft room tour live with us so we can get to know you better and see all your goodies, all the ways to get in touch with me are down in the description box. Okay, you can reach out on Facebook. And if you don't do Facebook, you can reach out to me on Etsy. All right. And send me a message there. I would love to hear from you. We would love to see your space and get to know you. It doesn't have to be a fancy space, y'all. It doesn't have to be all, you know, organized. I'm so not organized. You just see a small little section that I'm sitting in. <laughs> you should see my fabric stash now. I hope y'all have a fantastic rest of your week. I look forward to seeing you next week. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, Judy just asked a question. I want to make sure we answer her question before we go. Sometimes I always feel like I hit the I hit the end button and then I see a question pop up and I'm like, oh, if I would have just waited one more second, we could have answered that. She said, uh, how do you keep the writing on the quilt for when it's washed? Judy, they make uh, special fabric markers, all different brands and thicknesses and stuff that are designed for writing on fabric and they're permanent. They do have instructions and each one of the brands are different. They Some of them don't require heat setting. You just let them dry for 24 hours and you're ready to wash it. Some of them do require that you heat set it with an iron uh, before washing. And then, uh, you know, I don't know if y'all have ever seen these. They're the Pigma Micron pens. These are fantastic. Let me see if I can show you. These are fantastic on fabric. Pigma Micron, they come in different tips, right? So you'll see this little purple number, 01, 05. That tells you the size of the little writing nib at the very tip. Uh, they come in brown and black. You'll see it says archival ink on it, or you probably can't see that. <laughs> these are great for writing on fabric. So I really like these too. And it says right on the pen, micro pigment ink is uh, for waterproof and fade proof fine lines so I, I really like these for writing because uh the usual fabric markers 
have a little bit of a wider tip. Let me see if I can find one. Here we go. Here's a Marvy one. I like doing outlines with this, but I don't particularly like handwriting because the nib on this is quite bigger and the lines are quite wider and it's hard for me to write with a thicker pen like this. And of course, they go all the way up. They have really great big thick ones like this. <laughs> now that's really big. I probably wouldn't try and do a signature quilt with this fabric marker. So there's all different kinds. Uh, and you can even Google it to get some really great ideas. But these are just a few that I really like for writing on fabric that's not going to fade and wash away. I hope that helps. All right, everybody, now we're really going. Now we're really going. <laughs> okay, I'll see y'all next Wednesday. Share your pictures of this block over on Creative Crew. I would love to see it. Bye.